YouTube, um, so it's definitely been a while. I have had some very interesting health things going on, um, hence why I um, haven't been making videos. I'm going to apologize in advance if my voice goes in and out. Um, I'm kind of making this video to talk about some of the health issues that I've been having and to, of course, um, give kind of my perspective dealing with the healthcare system as somebody who is blind. Um, obviously, the COVID pandemic <laughs> has made healthcare very, very interesting for everybody during these times. And, um, you know, has definitely brought some unique challenges to people with a variety of disabilities. So my health problems started back in March, um, actually the week that everything shut down. I was doing a karate lesson via Zoom and I got pale and felt like I was going to throw up. We thought I had strep throat. From there, we determined it wasn't strep throat, um, so I got to go see a GI doc. The GI dog ran every kind of test you can imagine um, because I was throwing up multiple times a day. My throat got really, really tight. And um, there were and still are some days that I can't even hold down water or liquid. So um, I stayed at the GI dog for a while and. I had, um, yeah, I did the, the scope down my throat, which determined I had acid reflux, which I already knew. Um, I had a, an emptying study done, which is where they see how long it takes a liquid to go through you. I had an MRI and a CAT scan of my throat. I had x-rays of my chest and uh, stomach area and just a variety of, of tests. So from there, the GI doc said, well, we've basically run every test we can think of. And at this point, I'm, I'm kind of thinking, oh my gosh, is this, um, you know, what, what's going on? And um, is this psychosomatic? <laughs> and um, so she sends me to an ears, nose, and throat doc. The ENT um, looks at my throat, says, you know, I don't see anything wrong. Maybe you should go back to your um, internal medicine specialist to get kind of a, a big picture approach. So I, I um, went and saw a different doctor because I've changed doctors since then. <coughs> Excuse me. And that doctor said okay well here's what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna send you to an endocrinologist we're gonna send you to a um, psychologist and we're we're going to send you to a neuropsych a, a neurologist and um so i go and i see the psychologist to make sure i don't have cycling vomiting um disorder she says no which i didn't think i did um, both of my masters are in psychology, you know, but I, I at this point wanted to rule everything I could out. The neuropsychologist has a, um, hypothesis that I have an overactive, um, vagus nerve because along with the, um, persistent vomiting, I've started to have weird tremors, uh, mainly my left hand. My whole face has tremored. Also, there are uh, times when I eat where I'm vomiting up food eight hours later, meaning that while well, the, the gastric emptying study showed my food was going down normally, um, very clearly there are times it aren't. It isn't, I mean. So, I look up this um, with all the thickest nerve controls and it does seem to fit. My thyroid numbers are a bit off. The endocrinologist unfortunately had to cancel um, 
my appointment, which was supposed to be this month, it's not going to be next month, not the end of the world. Um, I have had MRIs of my brain, I have had um, a EEG of my brain, you know, again, just a whole bunch of tests. And I will say, everybody was very, very nice, very, very helpful. There were a few occasions where uh, my boyfriend who took me did have to wait in the car. He wasn't allowed to wait in the waiting room, but nobody had an issue with him filling out paperwork, you know, anything like that. Um, we did have one, I mean, bearing in mind, I've, no, no joke, I've probably been to the hospital and outpatient places and blood draw places probably 30 or 40 times since March. Um, we've only had one issue, one security guard kind of tried to get an attitude about him coming in and I was just like are you gonna come help me fill out the forms you know and uh, outside of that everybody's been very very understanding very nice very accommodating I know that this might not be the case for everywhere but if you are blind or a loved one is blind and you are concerned about being able to help fill out forms and stuff chances are you will be fine um you can totally call the facility beforehand and talk to them and tell them hey this person's coming for this reason it should be no problem like i said i haven't had an issue at all so please try not to panic if if that is a problem um for me in the meantime I have been um, prescribed an anti-seizure med, which starts with one me taking 25 milligrams a day, and it's going to end with me taking 200, and it's a really slow ramp up. So right now there really isn't um, much of a change, but I'm hoping that there is. If I do get a more <laughs> interesting diagnosis, I will definitely share it all with you. If you have any questions about any GI tests known to man, I can probably answer <laughs> what the experience is like. If you um, have any questions about like MRIs, EGs, let me know. I can totally answer that. Um, it's, you know, kind of fun they, for the EG. She's like, okay, we're going to shine a light in your eye. And I'm like, okay, go for it. You know. So, yep. As always, um... Let me know if you have any questions or anything. I'm planning to to hopefully start getting videos back up. It really just depends on how my voice holds up um, and how I'm feeling as far as tiredness goes. So, as always, thank you for watching.